guys about we're continually shooting ourselves in the foot and and contributing to the losses that we're suffering joseph from 49 yards away piece of cake and the vikings add to their lead a little bit short one official signaling the kick was good he made from 50 plus a moment ago Let's take a look. It's up there. It's out there. And dramatically falls short there. Must have hit fat. You can't blame the wind in here. <laughs> Lions take over at the 39 yard line. Stays at two position, 10 point gain. Middle of the field, there's Amon St. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, excuse me, his brother with the Packers, Equinemius St. Brown, has another brother, Osias, who is a receiver. He's been the go-to guy when Quentin Cephas went out. Goff dumps it off to Swift, powers his way, head-on hit. DeAndre Swift into the shot, Breland. Well, here we go. Uh, the one thing is, is everything, but he, everybody in the organization says that the fight in this team, you know, for being 0-4 is unbelievable. And, and here they are, you know, a two-possession game, you know, with just a little bit over 240, 245 to go in the game right here. And, and look at the way that they're playing right here. That that missed field goal by Minnesota, just giving them a shot of life. Inside the 20. Goff's throw incomplete. Hawkinson wanted a hold and get it. Let's check in with Carissa. Chris, Bengals down 22-14. Joe Burrow hands it off to Joe Mixon, who is even questionable to play in this game, scoring from eight yards out, two-point conversion. From Burrow to T. Higgins, also good. We are all tied at 22. Time permitting, we will get you out to this game. About three and a half minutes left in that one. Thanks very much. And obviously, the Packers and Bengals, a lot of interest in that game from both of these teams. This is the best spot, or matches the best spot the Lions have been, trying to get to the end zone, the 22 of Minnesota. On a second and 10, Goff's throw. Double coverage over there on Khalif Raymond. Yeah, you wonder, we talked about getting the ball to TJ Hawkinson, and, you know, he's the guy going vertical, leaned out. They got safety help there, and then it just continues over across to take away Khalif Raymond. Well, this turn on, you know, Joseph, Greg Joseph, who made from uh, 55 yards away and then missed from 49. That looked like it was good, but came up a little bit short. And it left excellent field position for the Lions. And this may be their best scoring threat of the game as we have just over two and a half to go in a timeout Minnesota. So it's not over yet. The fight in the Lions impressive, especially on that run moments ago after the catch. Let's talk about these two teams because the Vikings, this is their chance, at least they viewed it as an opportunity after losing three one-score games to turn their season in the right direction. Yeah, you know, they've got to get back on track. They've got a, a pretty tough schedule coming up. You've got Carolina, then they got a bye, but then after that bye week, it's pretty tough. One of the reasons maybe Dalvin Cook sits down today, he's not 100%, doesn't feel like he can be a positive contributor, so give him that week off, let him get healthy as he possibly can be but I, I tell you that that, that that last field goal by Greg Joseph you know we, we see it it's down the line he just made 55 like you said that's inside 49 I was so shocked that that came up short on it and boy that is really just giving this Detroit team all, a, a different shot another shot of life here at the end of the game the Viking defense came alive previously with back-to-back -back sacks on a third and ten nothing there it's fourth down Everson Griffin with the pressure on Goff, and they're bringing out Austin Seibert to make this a one-possession game. 
He's two for two today, and this will be 40 yards, this attempt. And he's made from 52. So this should be a piece of cake for Seibert. Again, just activated this week. And his kick is through. Seven-point difference with two and a half to go. Lions will have the one timeout and the two-minute warning. Keep mentioning one-score games for the Vikings. Overtime, a fumble from Cook. Cincinnati, the field goal, and then what was a 37-yarder that looked automatic for Joseph. Missed to lose to the unbeaten Cardinals. And they had a throw at the end of the game, a Hail Mary that went into the end zone, or at least they could have forced a tie in that loss to the Browns. And there's that schedule that we talked about coming up for the Minnesota Vikings. So Carolina, who's off to a nice start. We saw them week two. It's a good defensive team. Then they get the bye, can get healthy. And then you see that push they've got coming out of that bye. But but right here with, with just the one timeout and the two-minute warning, you, you got to onside kick so here. Yeah, you're saying onside it. Yeah. yeah. And it, Minnesota's got the hands team out there. Uh, it, you can't kick it deep. You, you don't have the ability to stop the clock enough. So I, I, I think you have to go onside kick here. Which is very, very difficult to convert with the new rule changes that they've made in the NFL in regards to this play. Saw so, uh, Thielen up there as well as Ben Ellison, the tight end, the hands guys. Going to go deep and play the percentages. Interesting. Amir Abdullah takes it on the sideline and works his way up the field. Hey, I got you, Will. Yeah, I, I understand how coaches today are, are reluctant to do the onside because of the rule changes that we've put in place since when I played. I mean, you could overload the entire side, um, you know, on the onside kick. And uh, there's just, it's just different rules today for player safety. It, it, it was one of the most dangerous plays, you know, back in the day until those rule changes made it a lot safer. So th there's a lot of coaches of the mindset now that it, it's so hard to convert that play. I, I, even though this is unlikely, to kick it deep with one timeout and the two-minute warning so I get two stops of the clock to stop this offense in one possession. Campbell believing in his defense, trying to put the pressure on the Vikings as Madison carries across the 20. Likely the last Lion timeout is now. And then you'll have the two-minute warning. So the Vikings will need to get a first down to ice this away. Otherwise, the Lions at least will get their hands on the football. The offense will one more time. Detroit did have an onside kick recovery in their opener. So it's interesting that even though it didn't work for them this year, that they decided to go this way. Because it's you need the touchdown of the extra point, obviously. It'd be one thing playing this game if you just needed a field goal to force a tie or get the lead. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of funny, right? Because, you know, Dan Campbell's from, you know, in between when I retired and, and, and where we are today as a player, and, and he said even in 2015 when, when analytics really started to become a big part of the decision-making, I was hesitant at that time. He goes, I started to look at him. I embrace him more than I did when they first came out. Uh, but I'm still using it as that part of the decision-making. Lions out of timeouts. You saw Jerry Jacobs, who, who played well at that corner spot, replacing Bobby Price for the most part today for... Detroit so if Price comes in here and he's out on the field now you wonder this is probably a run situation but if they need to throw will Cousins attack that area whatever it is they can ride this to the two minute warning that's the fullback CJ Ham falling across the 20 and the Vikings will watch that tick down and they'll be facing a third and seven with two minutes remaining in the game. Bucks. A little more drama than Viking fans expected. On a third and seven, what are you calling here? Well, they got the matchup down here that you were talking about. It's not Bobby Price, but... They keep it safe with Madison to let the clock run. And the Vikings are going to have to punt it away. And looks like the ball was taken away, but the official... That's Jalen Reeves-Maven, the official 
ruled down. We're inside of two minutes. So technically, let's see if that is a fumble. The official is, uh, is now pointing in favor of the Lions as Madison was going to the ground. That's well, if they didn't say that progress had been stopped, that ball is out. Fumble recovered by the defense. First down. Detroit. Ball is out. The, the knee of Madison was deep in the defender of the Lions. And it looked like Jalen Reeves Mabin. You see Elru Warrior tugging at it. That's just such a situation where you have to understand what's going on in the game. There's no reason to be fighting for yardage in that situation as a running back. So Alexander Madison has just got to know, listen, the, the most important thing here is to let that clock run, get up, punt the ball down, and force Detroit to drive the field on us. There's no reason to be fighting for yardage. Automatic booth review and confirmed it's a... And that is a true Lions takeaway. Dan Campbell counting on his defense to make the play. The idea of not an onside kick, of kicking it deep, and then forcing a third and seven where the Vikings played it safe with a run and turned the ball over. Please put one minute 56 on the game clock. 156. At the 20 yard line. And there is some consoling going on. What a game Madison has had to lose it at this point. And Dalvin Cook knows exactly how that feels. He had the fumble in, in week one that, that, that we looked at. And, and was that a fumble? Was he down? A chance for the Lions to force a tie. Swift. It'll be up to the Viking defense to secure this win. Yeah, and just remember how well that that front has played the last few series. The Minnesota defensive line has dominated the Detroit Lions offensive line. Now, you're in a different situation where you were forced to throw the football, so you were dropping back. They're, they're much more even with the playbook right here with this type of field position and the time left on the clock. But this defensive line for Minnesota has dominated the last three possessions. Four sacks of the game for Minnesota. Goff with a quick throw. And inside the 10. It's going to be a first down. Amon Ross St. Brown. Who has come back after injury earlier in the game. They're already down Quentin Cephas. And that's a first and goal for the Lions. Yeah, he's going to come from the outside. Watch TJ Hawkinson go through Eric Kendricks right there trying to get up the field. Creates a little bit of separation. Soft coverage by Alexander Madison in this situation. Mackenzie Alexander. <laughs> Sorry, Thank, you. Thank you. Because Alexander Madison turned the football over. The defense of Minnesota backed up on first and goal. No timeouts, Detroit. Clock running. Swift running into the end zone. Touchdown, Lions. That deserves a wow. 37 seconds remaining. Do you dare go for two, or you're going to kick the extra point? <laughs> Let's see. What a great job by Jonah Jackson, number 73, getting to that second level. He's the one that made it easy for DeAndre Swift. Now, They're going for the win Dan right Campbell. here on the road. A la Jack Del Rio down in New Orleans years ago. Roll the dice, Dan. And the Lions lead by one. A gutsy call after passing up a couple of fourth down gambles that he didn't want to go for. What a play. There's Kadero Hodge coming across in motion. And I, I tell you what, just great at getting the misdirection. Xavier Woods is trying to come across with that, and then he breaks back through, and that's how he got open and got the separation. Tired of getting pushed around by the Vikings in the last seven meetings. Campbell, for all the questions, pushed the right buttons and, and got the response he needed from his defense when they took it away. 
from Minnesota. Oh, there's just so many opportunities today for Detroit to say that's it. We've lost another one. We just can't finish. We can't close out these games. We continue to shoot ourselves in the foot, and they hang in there. They just continually hang in there. Yeah. I mean, and, and you just saw the picture of, of Alexander Madison and, and how he feels right now, like he let the entire team down. And how Jared Goff feels after a couple of turnovers. But DeAndre Swift showed you that fight late when it seemed like the game was out of hand and then fitting that he scored the touchdown. Now, a little bit of a tone setter there when he took on Brashad Breeland out there in, in, in the open field and, and ran him over. A piece of cake field goal. There wasn't any hesitation about the Vikings. Joseph trying from 49 that fell just short. Abdullah will run it out. Vikings have two timeouts, but very little time. He has stopped short of the 20-yard line. 33 seconds remain. Joseph, who made from over 50 with no problem, and this was on the way, but at the last moment, short. Good field position, but when they had a chance to ice it, Madison on a third down run, fumbles, and then Swift. Goff on the two-point conversion to Kadero Hodge, and that was the gutsy call. Dan Campbell not playing for the tie here in Minneapolis. Cousins still with a chance, and there's Thielen, middle of the field. His first catch of the game, and it's big, and a timeout Vikings. Are they going to call it or no? They have two remaining. Minnesota takes a second timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. 27 seconds. They're going to need about 35 yards to get back in range. Of course, we don't know the range after the Joseph miss from 49. Yeah, and, and to be quiet all afternoon long, and now here you go making a big play to start this drive. And, and I do think that that's going to be the big question mark, Chris, is, you know, when you're good from 55 but short from 49, I mean, it, it, it's really all about how you hit the football. So you can see uh, Greg Joseph over there warming up, hoping to get an opportunity to win this game. But first, they have to get in position. 27 seconds, one timeout. Catch made, but so is the tackle at the 45. Need to rush up and spike it. That's D.D. Westbrook. They're going to use the timeout their last. Minnesota takes its third and final timeout. Yeah, and that's one of those situations as a quarterback. You just want to throw that incomplete in that situation because they kind of had you defensively and conserve all that time because they've got a blitz coming off. You've got your little hot route that's going to be there, but you're going to get tackled right away in bounds. Need about 20 yards now to at least give yourself a shot. 22 seconds and out of timeouts. Joseph with a clutch kick in the opener to force overtime with the Bengals. Missed against the Cardinals that from 37. Arizona beating Minnesota in that game. Cousins. Middle of the field. Catch made. That's field goal range, and that's Adam Thielen. They need to run up and spike it as quickly as they can. Down to 10. 9, 8, 6, 7, 5. <laughs> Well, that shows you they have confidence in Greg Joseph from that distance. There was an actual an opportunity to get that clocked at about 11 seconds and then maybe have another chance for a play to get a few more yards off of that with a quick throw to the outside. And that's what I thought they would do because this is 54. Now, as you pointed out, he's made from 55, but this is also the direction where the 49-yarder was straight at it, but somehow seemed to die when it got toward the goalpost and fell just short. Joseph to give the Vikings the lead back. It's up there. It's out there. And this time it's through. 